Alrighty, so before I get into the video, I just want to throw out some love real quick this week. I made a mind Senpai Fruit. You may have heard of him. He's got a, you know, small channel of 26,000 subs, but, you know, it's all fairy tale content, let's be honest. But either way, right, <laughs> my guy has reached a conclusion for that channel. He no longer wants to do fairy tale content, and considering fairy tale is coming to its conclusion, he thought it would be a good time to create a new channel where he can uh, explore, obviously, different avenues and, and do a lot more content for stuff that he enjoys reading and watching and whatnot. So new channel sensei fruit already has one video five things you should know about Carnegie. i guarantee you guys you probably don't know some of the stuff that's in that video surrounding Carnegie. so definitely go give him some love and support uh, at sensei fruits there will be a link in the description go drop him a sub go drop him a comment say dress rosa sent you because fruit loves me you know everyone loves me i hope <laughs> but either way go show him some love and support i would greatly appreciate it he would greatly appreciate it and let's get on with the video Alrighty, so the possibility of Carnegie building a future for his child seems pretty prevalent at this point. You're probably wondering, where the fuck does this come from? What the fuck does this mean? Dress racer, are you just looking into things a little bit too much? Fuck, I might be, but still, there is that little bit of, you know, little bit of desire there, and I'm gonna make video on it. I'm gonna make content surrounding it. So, most recent chapter, very, very interesting. If I time these videos correctly, I've already talked about the dragon as well as the original one-eyed girl. I thought I would also talk about the toker and Carnegie situation a little bit more in depth right let's start off with the toker stuff there's a little bit of toker in this chapter as well as nishiki and basically this stuff was i don't want to say forcefully put in this but it was very persuasive to be in there if that makes sense in my opinion the panel time with toker and nishiki kind of wanted us to i guess invoke thought invoke uh, a opinion or invoke basically an idea of what's going on with toka at the moment she seems rather distraught or maybe not distraught but maybe a little bit depressed or worried i'm not entirely sure basically could be looking into a little bit too much but hey like that's the fun of it nishiki approaches toka you know she's looking after children and they were running around and whatnot the usual and nishiki comes along and he brings the children food as well as he brings toka a something of sorts something in a paper bag and nishiki says some peculiar words along the lines of here that thing you asked me for i'm not gonna ask what's it for i'll do you that favor quite peculiar words kind of implies that it's quite a peculiar object in saying that he doesn't want to embarrass toka to that extent but he knows what it is but he does doesn't know what it's going to be used for so i want to say if it was a pregnancy test he'd straight away fucking know what it's for right it is kind of embarrassing at the end of the day but i don't think it's to that point right i feel like it's something more of a maybe like a womanly thing uh more feminine thing that nishki's not entirely obviously sure what it's for but it's obviously more personal thing for toka and maybe a woman thing right so maybe something to do with her pregnancy who knows right but it seems like it could be potentially a device of sorts a lot of people thought it may be a pregnancy test you're not entirely sure is there another way to tell that you're pregnant without like uh without the pregnancy stick without the, obviously the lump of the child on your stomach so i'm not entirely sure you know what i mean it's not like they can just fucking go to the doctors and be like oh look you know give me an ultrasound or you know whatever machine they use see if i'm pregnant right it's not like that so at this point this has kind of invoked a lot of a uh, like what's going on what did toga get you know quite mysterious box that was forcefully put into the chapter i want to say it's something to do with her pregnancy i feel like this pregnancy stuff is becoming more prevalent now i know a lot of people don't actually like the idea but it seems like it's very well a possibility at this point even more solidified than when they were fucking having sex a couple of chapters back right it seems like it's a lot more played upon or at least more teased upon i should say so this mysterious object that nishki is i guess kind of embarrassed to ask about or as well as he doesn't want to embarrass toka at the same time is quite a mystery to us but it gives us the impression that it most likely has something to do with toka and her body or obviously her pregnancy another thing now connect this with the Kaneki and Tsukiyama talk. Tsukiyama mentions that Kaneki is not killing humans. Like, that's kind of like Kaneki's overall goal at this point. For ghouls to strive and live in a world uh, peacefully with humans, Kaneki himself cannot kill humans. He cannot kill investigators. That's why he brought a hundred quinkes instead of a hundred heads. You know what I mean? Tsukiyama's obviously trying to persuade him, like, look, for us to actually beat Furuta, you're gonna have to kill people. And Kaneki argues this point in saying that for a future with ghouls without him, him, he cannot kill humans. For ghouls to live in harmony without the One-Eye King, without Kaneki being there, he cannot kill humans. He cannot break, I guess, that foundation of what he's built so far, but he cannot fall to the extent of Furuta, in the extent of letting ghouls kind of try and live for themselves, you know what I mean? He's trying to build something for the future of ghouls, which is something that he wasn't trying to do in the first place. I know it sounds weird, right? Because that was kind of the whole point of him creating a group, right? But really, 
realistically, it wasn't really for the upcoming future, if that makes sense. It was more so himself, and more of a personal goal of his. He was very lost about it, that's for sure. He was very confused. Uh, but now he's kind of solidified on the fact that he wants to help ghouls live a peaceful future somewhat without him, if it comes down to that, right? Tsukiyama asks, why? Why is this a thing? Why do you care about the future of ghouls? What better way for Kaneki to change his thought process, to change his direction of what he wants to do with ghouls, and he wants ghouls to live in peace with humans in the future because of his son, right? If he realizes that Tok is pregnant, and he realizes that he cannot kill humans, because if he does kill humans, his son's gonna grow up in a world of war. His son's gonna grow up in torment, or daughter, you know, don't get me wrong, son or daughter, so child, I'll, I'll say child from now on. His child will grow up in torment, and just getting pushed out and shunned, and it's something that I don't think Kaneki wants for his child. This could be the biggest thing to why Kaneki has changed his direction overall. He is super serious about not killing humans, and it's so serious that it's causing him to lose this war. I'm just saying, like, you put two and two together, potentially the reason why his motives have changed so deeply is because of his child. The fact that he wants his child to live in a, a normal life, and choose the life that they want to live. It also implies that Kaneki most likely will die in the future, which is not a surprise to me, because obviously I want Kaneki to die at the end of the series, but they kind of implied that, you know, a future without me, without the one-eyed king, where ghouls still live in peace and harmony without disruption, is something is what he's trying to create. At the end of the day, that's kind of all that's, I guess, foreshadowed or teased about Kaneki's child. It seems pretty prevalent at this point. There's no, like, legit confirmed stuff, but I'm definitely keeping my eyes out for it. But, I mean, I'm super excited to see if this stuff becomes more prevalent in the future, if we're going to play on, I guess, more of a, you know, child spin-off kind of situation. So, I'm super excited to see what goes on. You know, Tok is very interesting. She's getting peculiar panel time, as well as Kaneki and, like, the way he's wording a lot of stuff regarding the future, which he's never really cared about to begin with. He's more of a personal, he's, he's very selfish. He's also very depressed, so, I mean, come on. I'm excited to see what goes. You know, he's he's got a motive, he's got plans, and, I mean, at the end of the day, he may achieve his plans. He may achieve the peace that he is looking for, but he's gonna have to shed blood. It may be his downfall. So, so with that being said, let me know what you guys think. Do you think, like, this most recent teaser stuff with Toka and Kaneki's, I guess, rebuttal to Sukiyam could be potentially about his son or daughter, their child, basically, and their child living a peaceful future after all this war, after all this torment and whatnot, after potentially Kaneki's dead and gone. With that being said, I'm actually going to end the video off here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.